moving along, is I want to conceptualize for all things P, for all things Q. And what I want to do this for is I want to do it for the conjunction, which is A and B. I want to do it for the disjunction, which is A or B. I want to do it for the conditional, I'm going to run out of space, which is A then B. And then lastly, I'm running out of space, I apologize. Lastly, I want to do it for the biconditional, which is if and only if A and B. That's a little small, it might be too hard to see uh, that, but it's the same as the biconditional. Okay, if I'm going to formulate a truth table for this, then what I want to do is I want to think of all the possible, all the possible claims I can have. So the first thing to do is just set up your truth table. We have, this is where we do the work. This is just set up. So just you know, sort of memorize this. It's going to be true, true, false, false. And we're going to make lines that go all the way across. OK, so we have P, true, true, false, false. Q, true, and they'll alternate. False, true, false. So just set that up in that, in that sense. So this is just all set up. Here's where we're going to actually do the work. OK, for A and B, if I, and actually, I can't, let, I can't use these variables. Let's use the variables. Sorry, A and B. If the, if the variables that we're using are A and B, every time I see an A on this line, I insert true. Every time I see a B, I insert true. For this line, every time I see an A, I insert true. However, every time I see a B, I insert false, and so on, and so on, and so on. OK, so if I insert true here, and I insert true here, this is true, and this is true. Remember, it's a conjunction. They both are true. Then what happens? This whole claim is true. If this is true, and this is true, then this whole uh, statement in understanding the idea of the statement logic, then this is true. OK, it's pretty simple. If this is true, and this is false, well, now I have something that's false, right? So if I'm adding falsity to my statement, my statement in a conjunction, if I'm adding it, the statement as a whole becomes false. OK? If I recognize that the addition of any falsity to my conjunction leads in the falsity of the statement, then I realize that wherever there is a false claim made, that my conjunction will be false. So I can fill in the rest, right? I, I immediately know then that both this is going to be false and this is going to be false. So I can make the further claim. Anytime I'm checking or attempting to determine, using truth tables, the um, truth or falsity of statement logic, which concerns a conjunction, only when both variables A and B are true will the statement be true. The rest will be false. OK, next, we move to the disjunction. Either this has to be true, or this has to be true. Now, if you think about it, if I'm saying one has to be true, or the other has to be true, in, sort of intuitively, without even writing anything on the board, without getting all technical, you can think to yourself, well, another way of phrasing is that if only one is true, if at least one is true, then the statement would be true, right? Because it's either this or it's that. So falsity isn't going to affect it. Uh, the disjunct as severely as it would affect it with the conjunct. So let's look. We substitute this truth here. So if A is true or B is true, well, it's true, right? Because at least one of them is true. The next one, if A is true or B is false, well, it's still not a problem. Why? Because we have at least one of these, at least one of them is true. So that's true. Now, we say, well, now A is false. But look, B is true. So if B is true, then uh, since at least one of them is true, 
It's true. Well, it's, as you can see, it's just the opposite of the, the conjunct, right? The only one that becomes false is when both A or B is false. So it's the polar opposite. With respect to the conjunct, only in instances where both variables are true will it be true, as opposed to the disjunct, where only in instances where both are false will it be false. So these are sort of antithetical. The next is the conditional. The conditional, um, there's um, a, a rather extensive proof, which I'm not going to get into, to discuss why the conditional is um, uh, described in the way that it is, or it has the, the statement logic that it does. I'm not going to get into it. Uh, for people who are just viewing this for the first time, sort of just commit the conditional to memory. Most of these are intuitive. The conditional isn't as intuitive. Okay. If since remember, we're talking about if then with conditionals. If A is true, then B is true. Well, that's pretty simple, right? That's true. If A is true, then B is true. Well, that's true. Now we look at the second one. If A is true and B is false, well, this is going to be false. And the question is, well, why is this false? If I'm making a claim, and in my claim, my premise is true, and I arrive at a false conclusion, this is the definition of an invalid argument, right? You lose validity when your premise is true, and you arrive at uh, a false conclusion. Something went wrong somewhere along the line, right? So that means within um, setting up a truth table and understanding via the statement logic that this will be false. Now, if I begin with a false uh, antecedent, I begin with a false A, if I say that A is false, and I arrive at a true conclusion, well, that will be true. And lastly, if I arrive at two false claims, if I say that, for example, um, um, all men are um, all men are have all men have the uh, species of I have no idea of all men are bovine let's just say that all men are bovine which is obviously false um, if all men are bovine then um, cows will um, <laughs> this is terrible if all men are bovine then cows will birth humans. I don't know. Sorry for the bad example. <laughs> um, despite the fact that both claims are completely ridiculous, right? There is um, no truth to the antecedent. There is no truth to the conclusion. There still maintains. There still maintains um, truth in the, in the in the statement, right? Because neither of neither of the um, parts, neither the antecedent nor the conclusion have any relationship to each other. So the easiest way to explain, um, without getting into the sort of semantics of it all, is that since there's no relationship uh, between these two, and there really isn't, since there's no relationship between the antecedent and the conclusion, um, it's, it's, it's at least true that there is no relationship. As I said, the conditional is probably the most difficult for first-time um, um, students of logic to understand. Um, the proofs for the conditional are um, far more advanced than something that I would introduce in uh, an intro lecture. Um, so just commit this to memory. These two, however, I feel that they're very introductory. You should be able to understand these um, initially. Rewind uh, the video if you need, and um, hopefully I explain it clearly, and then you'll understand.